Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing super great. I just wanted to wish you guys a happy new year. Before I get into this video, yes, I really hope this year is going to be great for you guys and new things are going to happen and new doors are opening and all of that. I really wish that for you guys. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for supporting me throughout the past few years because I know I've been on enough on YouTube, but um, I always keep coming back because you guys make me want to be here. So I wanted to thank you guys for that. Let's talk about natural hair because it's been a while since I've done that and I haven't done anything about natural hair for so long, so I wanted to share with you guys what I've learned in 2015. The things that I think we should totally be leaving behind in 2015, like let us not bring these things with us. So let us leave those behind and, you know, welcome 2016 and do greater, better things with our hair because we want better results or whatever. So yeah, that's what this video is about. So number one, heat. Okay, this one is a big one because heat is something that I am pretty crazy about. Like I try, <laughs> I'm trying really hard to be less crazy about heat, but here's the thing. I like heat because I like to blow out my hair. I like to blow out my hair every maybe two or three weeks. I really like to have my hair stretched out. It's so much easier for me to maintain. It's easier for me to do a lot of styles. I really like my hair stretched out. Now, <laughs> the thing is we need to chill with heat. We need to calm down a little bit. And we need to find better alternatives, like try and do heatless, you know, heatless ways of stretching your hair. I know my hair stretches um, if, I, if I put it in really chunky twists or it'll stretch if I just put it in a bun. And also a good alternative to heat, for instance, if you like to straighten your hair, is actually um, a straightener that has like a steaming capability, like, like a steaming feature. But basically what it does is it has this part here where you can actually act to you know put water in so that you can actually have a like a steaming um you know you, you steam your hair as you straighten it as opposed to just applying direct heat try to keep it to the lowest temperature possible i know it's hard because if you're trying to get your hair born straight you're always going to be pissed at yourself because you're like well if i use the lowest temperature possible it's not going to get as straight as i want no <laughs> do not do it sorry maybe i shouldn't be clapping with this don't do it, okay? <laughs> Don't do it, it is not good for you, it is not worth it. Number two, the fear of trimming. We are leaving behind the fear of trimming our hair, you know, because why? Because first of all, let, let, let us be honest, you only trim your hair, first of all, if it's necessary. You're not gonna trim your hair if your hair is doing just fine, it's healthy, your hands are doing great, like, there's no need for you to trim your hair. Like, now, when you do need a trim, you shouldn't be afraid to get it, because the earlier you get the trim, the less, um, the less damage you're gonna get. So if you're getting a trim when you see you start seeing that your damage is like half an inch long, trim that off before it becomes two inches of damage because then you know the split ends just keep splitting all the way up your hair strand. Cut down on the fear of trimming and if you don't trust a hairdresser to do it, maybe it's better to do it yourself. What I like to do is do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't trust people with my hair. I always feel like when you go get a trim, you end up with a haircut. And if you wanted a haircut, you would have asked for a haircut. So why? <laughs> I actually bought these shears by Jacques de Sange Paris. Um, they're actually designed mostly for when you try to cut layers, but I really like them. This third one is really for myself. Stop, <laughs> stop thinking it's okay to go to sleep um, with your hair just on anything like your hair is not designed to just sleep on whatever the flip you want you know I mean if you have really dry hair really coarse hair or you have really curly hair or hair that you know has a hard time maintaining moisture and you put so much hard work into getting moisture into your hair um, don't let it don't let it like fall apart because you're going to sleep <laughs> you know we don't realize how much time we do spend in bed if you're sleeping eight hours a day that's eight hours of your hair of your hair rubbing onto something that's not that it's not supposed to rub onto that's gonna dry it and that's like eight hours of your day that that's one third of your day so <laughs> that like if you don't realize it but that's huge you know in 2016 you will stop forgetting <laughs> to to sleep on something that is friendly for your hair so basically if you need a satin bonnet, get a satin bun. If you need a silk scarf, get a silk sc scarf. If you're better, if you prefer having pillowcases that are soft so that you can sleep, you know, and still be fly while you're sleeping, go ahead and do that. In 2016, stop keeping hair products that do not work for you. Because here's the thing with me. I like buying products to try them out, and even if they don't work, I like to keep them. Because I don't know why, I feel like there might be a day when I'll end up 
liking it or end up working whatever but the reality of the situation is it probably that day will never come that day is very likely not going to come unless something major changes with your hair you know if your hair um if somehow you know the damage you do to your hair changes its porosity then maybe yeah at some point you know products that didn't work for you before will work then first is i have this product which is actually like a, a leave-in you know treatment or whatever by ic and it, i don't it doesn't do anything for me like really it doesn't do anything for me but i still have it and i've somehow i've managed to even use it this much i mean it will actually to be honest was my mom's and then she did it to my sister it didn't work for my sister she gave it to me it still doesn't work so i'm thinking who am i gonna give it to <laughs> you know but the reality of the situation is yeah instead of holding on to this that's taking up space in my um in my room for no damn reason you know give it away to somebody who might, it might work for like a friend who wants you know to check it out whatever let it be their problem please <laughs> in 2016 i do not and i really mean i do not want to hear anybody else tell me that their hair is not growing unless you have like some kind of disorder which is understandable that's been stunting your growth or you know causing your hair to fall out or whatever um you shouldn't be say walking around saying that your hair is not growing because that is not possible okay your hair is always growing whether it's growing extremely slowly or extremely quickly or not quickly enough or it's always growing. The reason why you're not seeing your hair growing is because you're letting your ends die and your ends are breaking off or falling off or whatever. So you're stuck with like the, the shoulder length sy syndrome where your hair is exactly the same length every year. <laughs> it doesn't ever seem to go past that. That's your own fault, um, most likely, because you're not treating your ends in the way that they're supposed to be. So my thing is stop saying your hair is not growing because it is like I have living proof that my hair is growing because you know I just I, I like to dye my hair because I tend to feel I used to be that way like I knew my hair was growing but I felt like it wasn't growing enough and for me to realize how much my hair is growing I have to dye it all the way to the root you know and when it does show up like this I'm like okay so my hair did grow in the last few months. I'm not crazy, I didn't waste my time, and if I don't think my hair is any longer, it means I've lost ends. So stop making that excuse in 2016, please, don't do it anymore, I beg you. <laughs> stop letting your hairdressers do whatever they want to your hair. You know, I don't know, like, if you're like me, and you have like social anxiety, and you're very shy, and you don't really like talking to people, when somebody does something, like a hairdresser, you go to see them, and they do something that's totally not what you wanted, you keep quiet. <laughs> like, that's what I do. Like, I keep quiet, and then I'm just like, oh my god, and I'm frustrated on the inside. But here's the thing. You're, you're paying for a service, you know? You're paying because you're putting your hair in somebody else's hands. And it's important that you don't let them do whatever they want, and you, may, you have them do whatever you want. Because if you're going to walk out unhappy... You just threw some money away and now you're upset. I personally, um, yeah, I think it's really important that you let them know when they're doing something wrong. Like, oh, you're applying too much heat. Can you tone down on the heat a little bit? Oh, you're pulling too much on my, on my edges right now as you're doing these braids. Oh, I would prefer it if you did not braid my baby hairs, you know? Stop um, letting hairdressers do what they want with your hair. 2016, speak up, you know, it's okay. It's okay to, 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 to own what you want, you know, it's okay. So do that in 2016. I love you guys so much. I hope that you guys do join me in, um, you know, ditching some of these horrible habits that we have and we don't even realize that we do have and that are actually harming our hair. I hope you join me in fixing that. I also hope you join me in, you know, and just continue to subscribe and continue to support me, continue to watch my videos and, you know, follow me around and connect with me, comment, you know, talk to me because I, I really appreciate you don't understand, like, <laughs> your comments actually have made my life so much easier, so much more pleasant. Um, it's not very easy for me to be me sometimes and <laughs> reading, like, comments from people who don't even know me, who appreciate me and who, like, you know who like what I do it, it really it means a lot and it's helped me through the past couple of years so I just want to say thank you I want to keep um, being useful to you guys in any way that I can because you guys have been super useful to me I love you guys all my social links will be down below so don't don't be scared follow me bye